Now I'd like to do a formula that's going to uh, include an if. So uh, you would use an if, let's say, if, if the value of that field is going to change depending on the value of another field. Let's just say, for example, that if the order amounts are over $1,000, then there's not going to be sales tax. Okay? So, uh, but if it's less than $1,000, then we want to use the regular sales tax that's already there. So, the, the sales tax is a formula, and uh, you can find that in, in a previous video or in a different video. It's about formulas. But I want to change that formula. To change that formula, I can either use this one or I can use this one over here. It's actually the same thing. So I'm going to right click on the formula and we're going to pick on edit. That brings you back into the formula screen. Now I want to uh, add a couple of blank lines in here so we can put in if. I'm going to do if the order amount is greater than $1,000. We can even say greater than or equal to. Either one is fine. Greater than or equal to $1,000. Then. Okay, the structure of the if is the following. You're going to have the word if. You're going to have some kind of uh, condition. Now, this is a pretty simple condition. Sometimes it can be really complicated. Uh, so, the condition needs to be structured so that it's going to return for you a true or a false type of situation. So, in our case, the order amount is either greater than or equal to $1,000 or it's not. You know what I mean? So it's going to return for you a true or false. And then you have the word then uh, on the same line. Now you could keep on typing on the same line if you wanted to, but usually you would go to the next line just by hitting the enter key. Now if that statement is true, if this condition is true, then I want to type in the number zero here. All right, so the sales tax will be zero if the order amount is greater than or equal to $1,000. I want to type in the word else here. The else is the false part of the if. So anything between the if and the else would run if uh, the condition is true. And you could have multiple lines between the if and the else. That's okay. And they would all run if the condition is true. Now, if the condition is false, then the else part will kick in. So I'm going to get rid of some of these blank spaces. By the way, you can, you can leave the blank spaces there. Sometimes that makes it more legible. So now the whole thing says, if the order amount is greater than or equal to 1,000, then zero. What's going to be zero? Well, if you look up top here, we're in the sales tax part of the code. So the sales tax is going to be zero. Otherwise, in other words, if it's less than $1,000, then we're going to take the order amount and multiply it by 0 0.06, which is going to give us the, the normal sales tax. Uh, so everything between the if and the else would run when the condition is true. Everything after the else would run if the condition is false. If you have more than one thing that you want to do after the else, then at the very end of the entire structure, you would say something that's called end if the word end end and then the word if but you would only need that if you have multiple statements after the else so let's check our syntax now it's looking good we're going to click on ok and now let's do a save now the sales tax was already in our report as we can see in this column so we should see an immediate effect now notice how the order amounts that are over a thousand dollars now have a sales tax of zero so notice how the sales tax was affected by that, and also the line total was affected by that, because of course we're taking the sales tax plus the order amount to get us the line total. So the ones that are zero, you can see the line total is the same as the order amount. So um, I'm going to right click on this formula again and pick on edit, and here you can see a basic if. Perhaps in another video uh, within this series, we'll have more complicated ifs, but there's how to do a basic if in a formula in crystal reports.